Overwhelmed by the forces of House Wolfort, Esfrost's troops are scattered and driven from the Crown City. Glenbrook, at last, is free. Several days after this fateful battle, Queen Cordelia announces her intent to abdicate the throne and make way for another. Roland Glenbrook, his face no longer hidden from the world, will take his rightful place at the seat of power. With the Prince's friends having only just finished grieving his death, and his enemies having only just finished toasting to it, this news shocks the foundations not only of Glenbrook, but of Norzelia itself. Prince Roland has proven his pedigree by storming the walls of Whiteholm and routing his enemies, delivering his sister to safety in the process. The prince becomes king and condemns the schemes of Gustadolf, making known Esfrost's plot to usurp the throne. However, the people's reaction to this news is not quite a chorus of approval. It is plain that the ravages of war and the shame of subjugation have left an indelible mark on the once prosperous nation. Although the battle for Glenbrook is behind them, Serenoa and the rest of the city's liberators must make ready for a struggle of an entirely different sort. Congratulations on returning to your rightful throne, King Roland. Ah, you've returned. My friend, a word. Yes. I am honored to have had you by my side on this journey. To be able to call you friend. As am I, Roland. Your Majesty, representatives from Hyzant have arrived. We shan't make undue demands of your time, King Roland. We've simply come to say farewell. Without your aid, my people would still be under Esfrost's iron rule. Glenbrook owes you a debt of gratitude. Consider the debt paid. The knowledge we gleaned of Elfric's capabilities was more than worth our troubles. Indeed, it surpassed my every expectation. The Holy One is sure to be pleased with the results. Your Majesty, can we trust you to lift the embargo and keep Esfrost subdued? Of course. Lord Wolfort has promised his full cooperation in that regard. Your Majesty, lest you misunderstand your friend's position, allow me to make one matter abundantly clear. Minister Serenoa is of the Saintly Seven. He is not to serve at your whims, but by the grace of the Hierophant. I understand, but he is also a Lord of Glenbrook. More importantly, he is my friend. As such, I would ask for his assistance in the days ahead, as I have in days past. Your Majesty, it is plain that the friendship between you two runs deep. However, the rules of politics are old and immutable. And what does the Lord himself think of his new position? Of course, I am grateful for the honor Hyzant has bestowed upon me. I will do all in my power to serve both the Hierophant and King Roland with all faithfulness. In other words, the Hierophant does not have your full loyalty. Well, I... Glenbrook and Hyzant are to be two nations united in purpose. Surely it is reasonable that Lord Serenoa acts in service to both? Perhaps King Roland and the Hierophant should discuss my lord's role together. You are right, of course. It is not our place to assume the goddess's intent. Very well. I hope to meet with the Holy One as soon as my duties allow.
I expect busy days ahead for you, Sarah Noah. Be prepared. Certainly, Your Majesty. Milo shall stay in Glenbrook for the time being. If there is aught she can assist you with, consider her at your complete disposal. Remember, Milo, that you are the symbol of friendship between our two nations. <laughs> but of course, I live to serve, Minister. And with that, we shall take our leave. May we meet again soon. They leave us with a spy. It seems we still haven't won their trust entirely. Whatever secrets they uncover will only attest to our commitment to the friendship between us. Still, their actions speak volumes. Their aid has not come without expectation of just recompense. Already, they seek to make Lord Serenoa their puppet. But we need Hyzant's aid to crush Esfrost. By the same token, we cannot resist Hyzant without Esfrost's might. And once Esfrost is laid low, Glenbrook will have served its purpose. What then would stop Hyzant from tightening their grip? Just as they did with the Rosal. The injustice I saw at the Source is not something I'll soon forget. If you require proof of Hyzant's true nature, you need only remember. I know. I know. This country is my home. Built by my father and the kings before him. Safeguarded by my sister and generations of my forebears. I will rebuild it. Restore its glory and its pride. We will not be treated as dogs at the end of a leash. For now, we must look within. Only after that work is done should we look without. Oh, it's you. May we speak for a moment? Of course, brother. My apologies. I'm so happy you're alive. It's just... I believed you dead for so long. I understand. But hiding from the world was the only way. You needn't explain. I don't blame you in the least. Thank you. About General Avlora. Of Laura. She was... She was a servant of Esfrost. Our enemy. I know. And you know there was no room for mercy. Not if we wanted to win back Glenbrook. Not if I wanted to rescue you from Esfrost's clutches. However, I thought you deserved to know. She did have parting words. She asked me to protect you in her stead. It seems she cared for you, in her own way. She did. She was harsh, but always kind. Our scouts are yet searching for her, but her wounds were grave. I fear when we find her, she will... Cordelia? What's wrong? I... I'm fine. I simply need to rest. Fine? I think not. I'll call a healer. No, no. I just... This whole time, I've refused to show even a moment of weakness. It seems my efforts have taken a toll. 
You did well, sister. Now you may relinquish your burdens. I'm here, and I won't leave you again. But please, visit the infirmary. Some bed rest will surely set both of our minds at ease. Thank you. I'm glad to see your trials haven't stripped you of your kindness. Welcome home, brother. So, the Crown City has fallen. I see. And what of General Avlora? She fell into the Norzelia River, and has not been seen since. And my siblings, Thalos and Erika? They died, fighting bravely in battle. My condolences, Your Grace. I understand. I have fewer pieces on the board than ever now. Pieces? Really is true what they say about him. It seems I was wrong to think that Hyzant would remain idle. Or was my more grievous heir to be taken in by the Prince's false death? Hmm. Regardless, I was a fool to show House Wolford any mercy. Your Grace. Reports from the battlefield tell of an unknown weapon being brought to bear against our forces. Oh? Continue. They say it sank one of our ships in a blast of purple. Hmm. Our iron, our pride, torn apart like sheets of parchment before a storm. We mustn't allow Hyzant to think they've won the upper hand. I intend to answer their weapon with one of my own. After retaking Whiteholm Castle, Roland assumes the throne. Joy over the return of the line of Glenbrook sweeps the kingdom. Yet not everyone is quick to welcome Roland back with open arms. Life under as frosty rule treated them well, and they suspect him to be naught but a figurehead of a puppet regime. Roland's absence, it seems, made room for discord among his subjects to flourish. So that is what happened in my absence. Yes. Gustadolf was a clever ruler. After the invasion, Patriot and his royalists cozied up to Espros in order to protect themselves. Gustadolf used them to his every advantage. He stripped them of their privileges and left them nothing but their governing responsibilities. I don't think Patriot much cared for that, but it did ensure everything continued smoothly without interrupting the people's lives. Now I understand why there was little unrest after the occupation began. A clean, effective takeover by a well-seasoned commander. But all the while, he was preparing to face the next conflict. Wait, does he intend to march on Hyzant next? I believe so. I wish I could be more specific. But the Goddess's shield cannot protect the Holy State's capital from Esfrost. Not anymore. He said it will all be over once the Death Snell is ready. What is this Death Snell? A new weapon born from the coupling of his frosty ironworking and explosive projectiles. Thallus claimed it is powerful enough to break through the goddess's shield. To think Esfrost is capable of creating such a monstrosity. Ah, so much for their reign of peace. 
Taking over Glenbrook was only the first move in a bigger gambit to seize the source. I am disturbed to learn of Gustadolf's plan, but rebuilding our capital must take priority. Very well. We should investigate the extent of the damage and discuss how best to proceed from there. House Wolfort will lend whatever aid you need. Thank you, Sarah Noah. But since you are one of their saintly seven now, I'd ask you to keep an eye on Hyzance as well. Cordelia? Apologies. A brief spell of dizziness. I have been looking everywhere for you, Your Highness. A Patriot. I do not recall giving you leave of the infirmary. Your injuries are still healing. Would you undo all the trouble I went through to get you the best of care? Pray return to the infirmary at once. It wouldn't do to push yourself, Cordelia. Rest now. Leave everything to me. All right. We got a pretty good understanding of the damage in the capital, my lord. It's... Uh... Tad more than we were expecting. I see. Then we must make haste with repairs. Let's report this to High's aunt and see what aid they can give us. Was there anything of note besides damage? There ain't an easy way of putting this, but not everyone's exactly pleased to hear Prince Roland's return. S. Frost exempted Glenbrook's subjects from the salt tax. Likely a bid to get in everyone's good graces. A damn good one at that. But more than that, the so-called freedom Gustadolf brought to the kingdom seems to have made a splash. He threw out the old ways and made it so anyone could better their lot in life depending on their ability instead of their birthright. Just as in Esfrost. Then the people must have looked quite favorably upon Gustadolf's rule. I wager folks ain't too pleased to see us, since they figure it means things will go back to how they used to be. Uh, Roland surmised as much. We must do something to show the people his is a return worth celebrating. Anna, have you looked into the state of affairs in the castle? Yes. The head of the Royalists, Minister Patria, is extending his influence. He made quite the name for himself, even under Gustadolf. Though he seems eager enough to support King Roland, he was just as eager to serve the Archduke. I do not believe we can trust him. Distinguished members of House Wolford, how hard you are all working to rebuild our capital. What a delightful thing to see. Minister. You do us a great honor visiting us out of all the many other responsibilities that must vie for your attention. Oh, come now, do not think yourself so insignificant. The entire kingdom owes you its thanks, myself included, of course. We are so grateful for House Wolfert's aid, even though you now serve a different master. We are only doing what any of King Roland's loyal vassals would. Ah, speaking of the king, I'm afraid we've a bit of a problem. His majesty seems to be entertaining thoughts of retaliating against Esfrost. But the people have had their fill of war. And I'm sure you're already aware the people look upon the royal line with disfavor. <sighs> I only beg you take every care going forward. A warning. Even so, there is naught we can do but focus on rebuilding. Indeed. Let us return to the king and apprise him of our progress. I would walk the city with Gila a bit longer and speak with the people. As you wish. But this is not the capital you knew. Be careful, my love.
It was worth every effort. Thank you for journeying all this way to assist us, Medina. I fear the heels in this region are otherwise occupied today. You have my apologies. No need to apologize. You may call on me whenever you're in need. I have two wounded here. One of our own, and an Frosty. The cause of all our strife in the flesh. Treating the enemy first? Have you lost your mind? His wound is far more grievous. We must tend to him or he will die. What fealty have we to those who robbed us of our king? Who would drive us to ruin? We may have no fealty to his nation, but we have a duty to him as a man whose life depends on us. Leave your talk of allies and enemies on the battlefield. It has no purchase in a place of medicine. So long as I practice the healing arts, it is my duty to save them both. <sighs> they should be able to get some rest now. That was incredible, Medina. I am sorry for what I said earlier. I was not myself. All is forgiven. At one time, I would not have challenged you. Would that I had your courage. You can. Simply keep your desire to help those in need first and foremost in your mind. The rest is sure to follow. never come close to carrying on grandfather's legacy. Maybe I was never destined to be a great mage after all. Oh, it hurts. Oh no, the poor child's fallen. Hey there, are you hurt? Oh, it hurts so bad I can't even stand. Not to worry. I'll fix you right up. So dry those tears. Really? Yep. The pain will disappear like magic. You'll see. Wow. It doesn't hurt anymore. Thank you, sir. Grandma, look! My leg's all better now! 
Well, I'll be. Thank you so much for healing my grandson. You don't need to thank me. This is nothing. Uh, those robes. You wouldn't happen to be a student of the Archmage Grandante, would you? You know my grandfather? Oh, of course I do. What a great man he was. Always using his magic to help those in need, much like you. I was just one of many whose lives you saved. Why, that was over 30 years ago. I lost my house to the fires of war and nearly my life along with it. But he quenched the flames with his spellcraft and healed my burns. Had it not been for the Archmage Grandante, I would not be here today. I am forever in his debt. Even though Grandfather's name was erased from Hyzant's records, his memory lives on in the people he helped. It sounds like he was a truly amazing man indeed. And I know he would be proud of you for following in his footsteps. <laughs> do you really think so? I do. And I have no doubt that one day you will restore the glory to your grandfather's name. No matter what the Ministry does to erase his existence, his spirit lives on through you. Right. But I must keep practicing, that I might help even more people with my spells. Just watch me, Grandfather. I'll restore the honor of your name if it's the last thing I do. All right, lads and lasses, lay down your arms. Let your bruises remind you of the lessons learned today. Ah, what fortuitous timing. I still owe you for the drinks from the other evening. I wondered if I might treat you tonight. Apologies, Lass, but I've got places to be. Perhaps another time. He seemed troubled by something. Perhaps I'm overthinking it. Let us end our day's work here. It is early, is it not? Is something amiss? No, nothing at all. Just my attention is required elsewhere for a time. Elsewhere? Curious. How many have you had? <laughs> Not enough. Just one for you, I take it. Yes. Went by in a flash. Can you believe it's been 30 years? The time has escaped us. The memory of that day, however, I doubt ever will. Thrice damned, can't move. Always thought I'd meet my end with a beautiful lass by my side. You have many days ahead of you yet, Eridor. We will see you returned home. 
Don't try to run, you curs! Leave me be. I'll just slow you down. It was my cursed pride that got us into this. <laughs> Only I should suffer for it. We don't all need to die today. Run! Even in the face of death, you refuse to set aside your foolish pride. I followed you into this hell of my own will, and I will see you delivered from it. <clears throat> you fool! Charge! Come, come and die! Yeah! That would have been it for us, had Lord Simon not met their charge in time. Aye, and the only punishment for my pride were these aches that keep me awake at night. We hungered for glory all those years ago, without a care for how it would serve us later on. A couple of would-be heroes who couldn't be convinced they weren't invincible. Yet here we are, drinking, to celebrate the end of that war. I do not wish to reminisce upon the past. A toast that I may never again repeat the mistakes of my youth. Ah, uh, but before that... Yeah? You have served House Wolfort well, Eridor. That said, I have a feeling we'll need your sturdy shield even more going forward. You need me to lead a charge? I'm your man. I'll leave anything fancier than that to you. For House Wolfort! For House Wolfort. Roland, what are you doing out here? There's hardly a better place to become lost in one's thoughts, don't you agree? I suppose. However, if aught weighs on your mind, it may serve you better to turn to a friend. Then let me ask, do you believe me too immature for my station? Not at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. But the other nobles loved to gossip of my disinterest in politics and intrigue, and mocked my love of hawking. You said it yourself. Gossip and sniping, nothing more. Pay no mind to nobles and their petty judgments. The people who matter, your subjects, hold you dearly in their hearts. Stories abound of their love for you. Hey, go peddle your junk somewhere else. And why would I do that, my good sir? I see no reason to forego such a bustling avenue simply to please a stranger. A stranger? You're posted in front of my damn shop. You're stealing my customers from right under my nose. Oh, I am? I'm not sure your lack of customers could be blamed on me. Surely the proprietor bears some responsibility for... What bickering is this? None of your business, Welp. Now leave us to our negotiations. Prince Roland? Is that really you? A prince, you say? Well, I... A distinguished gentleman such as yourself must be mortified to have your customers bear witness to this childish bickering. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, your highness. My temper got the best of me. And you, merchant. If you mean to trade in Glenbrook, 
I trust you have procured the proper licenses and approvals. I, well, the process takes some days, you see. Pardon, your highness. Then your business shall have to wait some days, it seems. Shall I summon a member of the Kingsguard to explain the law in detail? N no, there'll be no need of that, highness. I'll just be on my way. Thank you, Prince Roland. Come visit any time, and I'll let you have your pick of my wares. <laughs> your place has always been with your people. You could walk down the main avenue and settle disputes with a single word. <laughs> Don't tell me you were watching. They were petty arguments, nothing more. As petty as they might have been, you were happy to do it. What better proof of royalty is there than that? But it wasn't because I was wise that I solved their problems. It was my name and status that let my words wait. Hmm. How do you imagine a kingdom with not a single dissatisfied soul would look? Hmm. That's a difficult thing to imagine. Indeed. I suppose the best one can hope for is to do what we can. While we can. Well, we can start envisioning such a nation. That one day we might build it. Together. I like the sound of that. No doubt the answers we seek lie ahead, so long as we stay honest with ourselves. And so long as we work together, you and I, Sarah Noah. moment, Gila? Oh, Frederica. Is something the matter? Well, I invited Sarah Noah to have dinner with me tonight. That's wonderful. Are you cooking for him? I am. I've been practicing with the book you gave me. I was hoping to finally show him what I've learned. Then allow me to help. What are you making? A warm soup full of meatballs. A hearty, meaty, savory stew to tickle the tongue and sate the stomach. Or so the book describes it. That sounds like quite a mouthful, in more ways than one. The author is rather verbose, yes. Anyhow, I also want to make an appetizer. Might you be able to lend a hand? Cooking is hardly my specialty, but... Say no more. I'd love to. Oh dear. This is disappointing, to say the least. And we're almost out of time. Sarah Noah will be back any minute now. Excuse me, Lady Frederica. Lord Serenoa has just sent word that he has been held up at a meeting. He says there is a chance he may not even return tonight. I see. Thank you for letting me know. It sounds like your dinner may get postponed. A blessing in disguise. It gives us time to cook this again and do it right this time. Lord Serenoa may not even return tonight. But there is a chance he might. And I refuse to disappoint him. Would you help me, Gila? Of course, Frederica. I shall do my very best to see this through with you. I cannot thank you enough.
The vegetables are done, though they are a far cry from perfect. The meatballs are ready too. Now all we have to do is stew them. Frederica, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. It appears we've run out of time. I was on my way here when something urgent came to my attention. I apologize for returning so late. I know we were supposed to have dinner tonight. I am just happy you're here. Besides, I am the one who should apologize. I wanted to cook you a meal, but failed terribly on my first attempt, so it isn't yet ready. I'm sorry, Saranoa. Don't look so down, Frederica. I was delighted when you asked me to share a meal. Now that I'm back, why don't I help you with the food? Saranoa. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm overjoyed we could spend this time together. As am I. I enjoyed cooking with you as well. The time we spend together is very precious to me. I regret that my duties have been keeping us apart lately. But when I noticed the sky was even more beautiful than ever this night, I hurried home, hoping we could gaze upon its beauty together. It's strange. When I was in Esfrost, I would look up at the same sky. But it felt so much colder there. The stars seemed as if frozen. They did not twinkle the way they do now that I am with you, Saranoa. Frederica, <sighs> promise me that you will always stay by my side. I need you, now more than ever. Of course, Saranoa. I wish to gaze up at the same sky, sit beneath the same moon, and walk the same path you do. Together, forever and always. Under this tree. This here's the land of the Jax clan. Or used to be more like. That clasp on your chest, that's their sigil, if I'm not mistaken. It's a memento from my parents. Or so I was told. Aye, now that I'm looking for it, I can see the resemblance. Same silvery hair and everything. Villages near here met with a pretty terrible fate. They begged the armies to spare their fields. The only one who listened was one of House Wolfort's bannermen. No one was surprised, big war hero that he was. But by the time we got here, the Jacks had been all but exterminated. He was digging graves for the dead, enemy and all. A hero and a gentleman he was. Names on the tip of my tongue. Benedict. Aye, that was it. Do you know the man? I'd like you to pass on my gratitude, if you do. Thanks for showing me the way. Your coin's all the thanks I require. If that's all you'll be needing me for, I'll leave you to it. You make a poor stalker. 
Ain't exactly what I'm built for. You fought in the battle here, didn't you? Benedict swore me to secrecy. But suppose it ain't break an oath if you already know. Oh, but first I ought to tell you. You've the right to the truth. And those ain't my words. They're his. That's why he never tried to stop you from finding out about your parents. You know of their fate? We drove the enemy up the clifftop. Cornered him there. The same instant we cut their leader down, a babe cried out in the distance. In the hideout, we found you, all swaddled up. A letter pinned to you with that same clasp on your chest. <sighs> Live strong, Anna. Stronger than any. I see now. Your family died at our hands. If it's vengeance you want, you can take it out on me. That doesn't sound like the Eridor I know. Do you think so little of me? To assume I would forsake my friend, bloody my hands with revenge. I know the truth at last. That is enough. Is it, Anna? Or are you forcing it to be? Don't be a fool. Benedict is the one who raised me. If I ever want for a father, I know where to find him. When we've won this war, I shall make sure he understands that. 